It's discussed Nigeria once more on African Free Press Television. My name is Leo Oketa, and it's the U Tide season where so many things are changing. In that regard, we are changing the perspective. We are looking at Nigeria this time around. We are talking health and wellness. Today, with me in the studio, joining me is Dr. Opiomangoba, who is the CEO of Home Calls, a professional medical institution. You're welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now, let's start with what your company is. What do people get from you when they give a call uh, to Home Calls? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, home Calls Nigeria is um, a healthcare service provider presently operating in the FCT. And what we do is um, we actually promote preventive medicine. We, uh, we have the vision of um, promoting and eventually establishing the concept of preventive medicine here. We, we have um, families registered with the company and, and um, we do their routine health checks to we'll ensure that um, they are vaccinated for every preventable disease, disease condition. And as well, we also ensure that domestic emergencies, home domestic emergencies are attended to um, effectively, efficiently as well. And um, when we have cases that require hospital um, stay, or probably in cases that require some form of surgical intervention, we liaise with the hospitals that they already have a relationship with and ensure that the services are provided effectively and that the results are, the required results are attained. Yeah, basically, um, you've just talked about preventive medicine, preventive health care. It means that's where uh, you people focus on, basically. Can you expand sheets more uh, about what preventive health care system is all about? Okay. Um, truth be told, you discover that most conditions that um, are prevalent in our environment are preventable. And, you know, uh, what is the mainstay of medical practice now in developed nations is preventive medicine. When you visit, if you happen to visit a clinic and you assess the patients that are present there, for example, in um, the US, you will discover that most of the patients there are not sick. Majority of them come for their annual physicals, some come for their shots, which are vaccines, to prevent diseases and things like that. But down here, virtually all the patients you get to see in the hospital are all sick. And when you, when you consider the costs, you consider the effect of the complications, and you consider the time spent, you see that uh, you have so much to gain if you are actually working towards preventing and treating. Let me give you a typical example. Um, so many ladies in the country as it is, even those that um, are relatively considered as exposed, do not understand it if you try to make them realize that they ought to have a pap smear done on an annual basis. A regular pap smear done on an annual basis. Now what's what the purpose what of mean? a pap smear? Yeah. Now a pap smear is a screening test that is done on females from the ages of 18. Well, it used to be 18 but now it has gone below 18 because um, people, are get, people get exposed to sexual intercourse much earlier now than it used to be. So because of that, he can start the regular pap smear from 14. Now the purpose of the pap smear is to screen for changes at the cervix. The cervix is the opening of the womb, the uterus yes. of the female um, reproductive system. Now that is where the cervical cancer takes place. The cervical cancer is a cancer that affects the cervix. Okay. And it is the second most common female cancer in the entire world, second most common, second to breast cancer. So if one does the regular pap smear, if there are any changes in the cervix, 
those changes are recognized early. That is why we're talking about early diagnosis. When you notice those changes early, there are interventions that can now be done to prevent the full development of cancer. So, and this is something that is meant to be done annually. Now, that is one example. Secondly, there is a virus that is associated with cervical cancer, which is called the human papilloma virus, HPV virus. Now, this virus has a vaccine that prevents it, which is called the human papilloma virus vaccine. And if this, va this vaccine is administered before exposure to the virus, the person is protected from this virus, which now tells you that cervical cancer is completely preventable. Okay, that, that's very good to, to hear. Well, you talked about, I heard you talk about um, that this checkup should be done annually. Is it like annually or how regular should one visit the hospital or um, visit your institution for such? Well, it depends. Now, for people that already have ongoing chronic conditions, they have reasons to visit the hospital more often. For, an, for example, someone that has, um, has been diagnosed with hypertension, someone that has been diagnosed with diabetes. These are common chronic conditions that are prevalent. Now, um, such a person, for example, for such a person ought to visit the hospital more regularly. Someone that, is, someone that for example, that is um, hypertensive ought to review his blood pressure, I would say, on a monthly basis. Even though he has his his, um, his um, glucose money, his um, blood pressure monitor at home, which he can be using on a more regular basis. It's always important to have a reading from either a mercury or an aneroid speed manometer in the hospital to compare because sometimes some of those machines could give erroneous results or erroneous um, reports. So it's so for someone like that, person could go monthly. But for an individual without any known mm. health challenge, mm. it's always good to do an annual check. You go to the hospital, you check your eyesight. Very important, people don't do that, but they don't know that it's very important. You check your eyesight, you check your systems. You check your, by your systems, you check your kidney function check your liver function, you do uh, a lipid profile which will let you know how far you've done, how far you've gone with your cholesterols. And then um, you can as well check your, sh your fasting blood sugar, all right? And then check the other blood parameters, the full, the full blood um, parameter, the full blood profile, and the full blood count. So these are things that are necessary. And then you could as well go further to um, do an ECG. An ECG tell would let you know the integrity of um, your heart function. So these are things that people need to do annually. Then depending on your age, because um, for men that are 45 and above, they also need to do what is called a PSA. A PSA is a blood test that you can use to, to check the prostate in order to, prev in order to, to, to identify an anomaly in the prostate function early because the, the prostate cancer is the most common male cancer. Most common male cancer. And so if the individual checks his PSA annually and there is a malfunction in the prostate to be identified and then investigated further, in which case this is another, this if this invariably means that the person has prevented prostate cancer. Yeah. So, um, like I said, um, if the person is um, okay, an annual check is, is, is fine. But if the person has chronic conditions, then the person needs to, needs to have regular appointments with his doctor in the hospitals. Okay, are they special vaccines for uh, making this prevention uh, you're talking about? Yes, there are. Um, there, are, there are vaccines that are not included in the national um, program on immunization, which is the Nigerian Immunization um, Agency. Uh, and these, and these vaccines are vaccines that 
are available which people could use to prevent some certain conditions. It's important to note that um, there are very potent, very viable vaccines to prevent typhoid fever. Yes, there are um, very potent um, vaccines to prevent typhoid fever. There are vaccines, like I mentioned, to prevent um, HPV, uh, the human papilloma virus, and that's for cervical cancer. Yes. Um, the, the hepatitis um, vaccine are also there. It appears that so many people are ignorant about um, the prevalence of hepatitis B. A lot of people, from my experience, I discovered a lot of people are quite ignorant about the prevalence of, of hepatitis B. But the good thing is that the hepatitis virus is in the schedule of the uh, national um, program on immunization. So every child born in Nigeria presently that goes and takes the regular, goes through the regular vaccine schedule, gets protected from hepatitis B. Okay, you know, people always say, um, when you talk about some of this preventive uh, healthcare system, people just say, oh, it's better I keep fit. What is your take on fitness and, you know, exercise as regards preventive uh, healthcare? Okay, um, fitness has a lot to do with one's total well-being. I'll give you uh, a scenario, or rather I'll give you um, a little example. Um, type 2 diabetes is associated with overweight and obesity in the sense that the bigger one's torso is, the greater the likelihood that a person could develop could, doesn't mean that the person will, but the, the, it means that the person has a greater chance, chance. Of, developing, of, of developing type 2 diabetes. Now, for people that um, are fit, because when you're talking about fitness, you're talking about the body mass index. Yeah. Now, um, people that have a regular body mass index, that are not overweight, they, um, they actually function better. Now, what I mean by they function better, the circulation of materials in their system. The body system is made up of 75% water. Now, if the body system is made up of 75% water, it means that um, there has to be a sufficient flow for materials, for oxygen to be moved from tissue to tissue. Now, for someone that happens to be athletic and has regular exercise, he enhances this circulation, which means that the tissues get the required materials and nutrients and oxygen that they require to function optimally. Mm -hmm. so, so someone that is fit, that has regular exercise in his routine, would always perform better than someone that does not. The issue of fatigue is less with someone that is fit than someone that is not. The, pre, the, intro, the uh, introduction of um, disease conditions will be less with someone that is fit than someone that is not. Well, he, he don't, if, uh, um, sorry, I have to cut you in to okay. chip this in. People say, because you're slim, because I'm slim, probably I'm already uh, fit, I don't need to, to maybe go doing so much exercise. What do you think about that? Not at all. It doesn't actually go that way. There are a couple of people that are diabetic that are slim. All right, um, what I'm actually trying to say is that exercise is a necessity for, the, for total good well-being of an individual. It's a necessity because whether you're big or you're slim, you need to ensure that there's adequate circulation going on in your system. You need to support your system by enhancing circulation. You need to contract your muscles to enhance circulation. Yeah. And the way you can do that is through exercise. Okay. When the circulation is enhanced, organs, systems, tissues work optimally because of that transfer. The transfer of nutrients, the transfer of material, the transfer of oxygen, which is essential for a human being to perform optimally, essential for the brain to perform optimally, essential for the organs to perform optimally. So be you slim, be you big, you, 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 being fit doesn't necessarily mean being slim. Let me put it that way. <laughs> being okay. fit doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean being, being slim. Okay. Being fit means that your system is working, working optimally. optimally. Okay, we hope our systems are working optimally. If you're just joining us, we've been discussing Nigeria on African Free Press Television. Health, they say, is wealth. 
We've been talking health and wellness with Dr. Obioma Ngoba.